So I've got the um, tool change strategy sorted out for this uh, multi-material hot end. But before I get into that, in the last video I mentioned that um, I could be getting some help with some filament. Um, and that has indeed come to fruition, so that's good. So um, a chap called Luke Taylor from Polymaker um, has agreed to sponsor me with some filament. Which is excellent news, because I'm at the stage now where I've kind of got as far as I can, but I need some more uh, different filaments to play with and actually start printing some multi-material parts. So Luke has agreed to send me a, um, a number of reels of uh, various Polymaker filaments that I can uh, I can play with, so that's really good. And thanks Luke, and thanks to Tim K as well for putting Luke in touch with me, so much appreciated. So when I was playing around with tool changes, um, one of the issues I noticed was that when changing um, when changing from a low temperature filament to a high temperature filament, that's reasonably a fast process because I run 80 watt heaters. Um, so it doesn't take all that long. Um, but when changing from a high temperature filament to a low temperature filament, um, it takes it was taking quite a long time for the hot end to cool down. Especially if I've got one filament that's at say 290 degrees, I've been printing with that, and then I change to one that wants say 210. Um, so that 80 degree drop in temperature with um, just sitting there in still air was taking about 100, just over two minutes, about 122 seconds. So I had this idea of um, fitting an extra fan to force cool the hot end. I scrabbled about wondering where the hell I could fit it because there's not all that much room on my gantry and came up with the idea of fitting it on the uh, the purge chute, purge bucket. So um, tool change will always, uh, when changing one material to another, there will always be a purge. So the print head will move to over the, the, over the chute, as it were. Um, so that's where I'll put the fan. So um, here's, a, here's a picture of that. So basically um, on tool change the, the print head moves to the back of that bucket and then if the temperature is um, higher than the new temperature that it needs to be for the next filament then the fan will run um, and blast cold air over it. So that 122 seconds cool down time from 290 to 210 um, is now less than 40 seconds, about 38 seconds or something like that. So it's a significant um, significant improvement and uh, it's uh, I, I used a 40mm blower fan that I had laying around and a bit of aluminium that I bent into shape so it cost me nothing so worthwhile doing. So in terms of tool change um, I'm not physically changing the tool I'm just changing one extruder to another but I need to obviously heat the tool and, and I can also set things like retraction amounts and stuff like that. But So the, the way that the duet handles the tool change is via a series of macros so there's T3, T pre and T post. Um, and then you have a different macro for each tool. So T3, 0, T3, 1, T3, etc. This is a sequence of what happens on a tool change. I'm reading this out. So if another tool is already selected and all axes have been honed, run the macro T3, that's step one. Step two, if another tool is already, deselect, is already selected, deselect it and set its heat to the standby temperature, as defined by the R parameter in the most recently G10 for that command. Uh, step three, if all axes have been honed, run the macro T pre. Step four, set the new tool to its operating temperature, specified by the S parameter in the G10 command for that tool. Uh, step five, if all the axes have been honed, run the macro T post. Uh, step six, apply any XYZ offsets for the new tool. And step seven, use the new tool. So that's the sequence. So here is my T3, which is the first macro that runs, and basically all that's doing is retracting the filament. The next one is T post, which um, moves the gantries to the to over the to the to their position over the purge chute. Um, so in this case, I'm I use a, a global variable, 
um, I have two. I have a global left and global rear. Um, so that defines the position um, that the nozzle needs to be in relative to the um, purge bucket. Um, so I use that same position in a number of different macros and a number of different situations. So I've defined it, defined it as a global variable, and then I can just call it in any of these other macros. So I've got G1, X, global left, U global left, A global left, because I've got my X, Y, U, V, A, B, three gantries as it were. And then uh, Y, V and B all go to global rear. A feed rate of 18,000 which is 300 millisecond so it does a fast move and then T post is this one which is a bit more a uh, bit more involved and so first thing it does is wait for a second and then uh, then I'm using a while loop so basically it says here while heat heaters dot current is greater than heat heaters dot active plus four degrees so it looks at the the, um, the current temperature for the tool that's just been selected and compares it with the active temperature for that tool and if it's four degrees higher then it will turn on the force cooling fan so the message pops up force cooling nozzle blah 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 uh, and then it m106 turn the fan on and then it waits a second and then it runs through that loop again until the temperature is um, within four degrees of the active temperature so i'm quite happy with four degrees if that, that's near enough as far as i'm concerned then once that loop has finished then um once the temperature has reached then you've got an m106 s0 to turn the fan off again so then i and i use the same um loop principle um for if the uh, if I'm going from a low temperature filament to a high temperature filament, I need to heat the nozzle. So I could use M116 to wait for the temperatures to stabilise. But the problem with that is it waits for the temperature of all the heaters associated with that tool. And I've, because I've got the combining block at one temperature and the nozzle at another, I'm not overly bothered about the combining block temperatures. It will be the same pretty much 190 degrees throughout the print, regardless of what nozzle temperature I use for different filaments so I don't care too much about that um, and the other thing is M116 will wait for the temperatures to get within one degree of the set point and in my hot end because I've got two heaters and they interact with each other um, it can take a little while for them to settle to get within one degree but I'm happy enough if it's within three degrees so this other loop Again, while heat heaters current is less than the active temperature minus three. Um, so basically it just sits there waiting because it set the active temperature and they're just waiting for it to come up. And um, when it gets within three degrees, then it will continue. Um, so the next thing it does is purge the tool. Uh, that's a separate macro and all that does is just extrude about a hundred mil of filament. After it's finished purging, it retracts the filament and then the nozzle wipe moves the head to the left, um, sorry, from left to right, but also from back to front and front to back, back again. So it passes backwards and forwards over the, over the wiping strip a couple of times. And then the um, final command on that is um, this G1R2 to return the gantries to where they were um, so the R2 is a restore point, so it, it will restore the gantries to where they were at the start of the tool change sequence, and then it will just carry on printing normally. Here's that in action on the uh, on the web interface. So going from um, so I've set tool zero to 290 um, for the nozzle, and tool one to 210. Um, both of them have the combining block set at 190. So this is um, the tool change macro in action when I go from T0 to T1.
and this is it when I go from um, T1 to T0 where it has to heat the nozzle, the nozzle rather than cool it. And this is how it looks on the machine, going from uh, high temperature to low temperature. T0 to T1. And then from low temperature to high temperature, T1 back to T0. So that's all set up and, and running now, so I just need to get my hands on some other filaments and um, find out how they print and the breast temperature to use and retraction settings and all the other stuff. And, and I can put, um, if I need to change retraction settings, I can add those into the T-Post file for each filament type. So as ever, if you found this useful, um, I'm always grateful for anybody that wants to support me via um, PayPal or Patreon or whatever. I've, Lots of things I still want to do. I want to um, control the humidity in the booth that the printer sits in and I want to do something about um, heated chamber and I'm thinking of some sort of focused heating using um, halogen lamps or infrared lamps or something like that so that I can heat the, the part on the build plate without um, all the electronics that are inside the booth getting too hot, something like that. But it, that all costs money. Um, and I still... I might, might want to modify the hot end and, and um, improve the heat break in between the, so that I get a bigger separation in temperature between the zones. So it, it's all materials and tooling and it, and it all costs. But um, anyway, I'm very grateful to um, people that have supported me so far. And um, until next time, thanks.